to the track. The wall makes the leap and makes the catch. Amazing catch by Junior. He got it. A perfect game. 13 strikeouts. Welcome to episode five of the Champions Adjust podcast. This is season two of the Champions Adjust podcast, episode number five. We took a considerable break between episode four and episode five. We apologize for that. We're just getting rolling on our baseball season. We got games and tournaments and practices every week and every weekend. So we're figuring out our schedule, but I think we've locked in recording around two, three o'clock on Mondays to put out an episode every Thursday. We'll most likely do 10 to 12 episodes in this season and then maybe uh, sporadically throughout the remainder of the season and then we'll hop back in for our um, exclusive postseason episodes which we did last year which were received really well so we'll do those again this year. But again, this is episode five. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry for the long delay. We're doing the best we can. And yeah, welcome to the show. Coach Bodson. Hey there. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? Are you? Yeah, I'm. I'm very good. I'm excited to be here. Uh, like, uh, like Aaron said, it's been you know tough. We also have our day jobs, right? So uh, we we both work really hard, but this is something that we both really enjoy doing. So I'm excited to to have a, a time weekly lockdown so we can talk about you know anything from uh, bat flips to long balls and bunts and, and everything in between, right? Nice, nice, yeah. yeah. Bat flips to short hops, baby. Oh, that's, Youth yeah, that's baseball uh, to all the way up to uh, Major League Baseball. We sure. got a few topics we want to discuss. Yeah. So today that we're recording is May second, so that means we have we've had one month of the Major League Baseball yeah. season. Yes, we have. And so we don't want to jump too far ahead of ourselves, but we will make some predictions. We'll talk about maybe some MVPs um, of the first month, and, uh, and then we'll go from there. Sure. Um, you want me to start with my predictions? Yeah, what do you got? Oh, yeah, yeah. What Here's what I got. Coach okay, Watson. so I got my predictions. Um, some are pretty, uh, pretty predictable predictions. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I got the Dodgers winning the NL West. The NL Central is going to go to the Brewers. The NL East goes to the Mets. The Mets have started hot. super hot. Um, I think that before the season, people were seeing what the Mets were doing with their free agencies, their trade market, saying. Okay, well, yeah, but they're still the Mets. So like, what are they going to do? Well, I mean, we have the benefit of having seen them for a month, and they are a really good team. So I'm going to go Mets to win the NL East. Um, as I'm sure everybody is aware, you now get three wild card spots into the um, into it, and then the first two seeds get uh, by, and then that three seed and four seeds play uh, wild cards, uh, and five seeds play wild cards. Um, so. Um, my wild card picks are going to be the Giants and the Braves. And then I don't know if I believe myself saying this, but I'm going to put the Cardinals in there just because I'm a Cardinals fan. And I, I firmly believe that I love the Cardinals and I want them to be a wild card team. Absolutely. Um, I do believe that the Padres pose a very strong threat. I also believe the Marlins are a really strong team. Um, the Marlins um, you know, revamped a lot in their farm system. They revamped a lot in their... Um, in their uh, lineup, so they're they're a really fun team to watch play, um, and uh, and so they're they're a team to watch. Uh, so the Marlins and the Padres are teams to watch. But again, I got Dodgers West, Central is going to the Brewers, East going to the Mets. Wild cards are my Cardinals, your Giants, and the Braves. I mean, right now, if the season ended right now, you would be right. Right, Mets are winning the East, Brewers are winning the Central. And the Dodgers winning the West. Right. And then the Padres and Giants are basically tied. Uh, and then the Cardinals are slightly behind them in terms of winning percentage. You, you know what's crazy about the Dodgers, too, is they really haven't been um, playing very well. Like they're, they are um, 
they are not hitting as well as they could be, which is scary because the Dodgers are tied in first place right now. Um, they're 14 and seven, and they still haven't um, they still haven't hit their stride. So that should be a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, the Padres and Mets are interesting because they're just they 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 usually put together good baseball teams. But they can't ever finish towards the closing line. Right. And they just have to get over that hump, I think, once. And then you start to kind of build this culture around being able to finish. Yes. And being able to put together good teams, but also build team chemistry within that, uh, within having those good players and then being able to finish when it matters most, like at the end of the season. And the Dodgers and Giants have been so consistent with that because they're consistently in the playoffs. So their kind of organization is surrounded by this expectation. Mm -hmm. um, the Mets and the Padres haven't yet met that. So maybe they will. I think we have the same thing can be said about the Blue Jays and the Mariners on the opposite side, which we've talked about extensively on this podcast, hoping that those teams can get in this year to spice up that American yes. League side and, and make it a little bit more exciting. I mean, and potentially the Angels too, because they're playing really well. Right it's now. crazy because the Angels um, have, you know, are, are a really fun team to watch right now. They they have, you know, all three of their outfitters are just tremendous right now. Um, and uh, then they have pitching is, is working out really well. Yeah. The defense is working out really well. So, um, the Angels are a lot of fun. I didn't you know them and the Mariners are just are just great. Um, you have Tyler Wade who just came, you know, out of or excuse me, um, Taylor Ward rather. Uh, yeah, Tyler Wade. T Taylor Ward coming um, out this year, and you know he was decent last year for for you know his his short time in the majors, but he's uh, putting up phenomenal numbers, which showed why they uh, they released Upton before the year. Mm. Um, so. Um, they have a phenomenal outfield, and I think it'll be a lot of fun to see Mike Trout and Shohei Otani in the uh, in the playoffs. Absolutely. All right, let's roll to your American League side. Great uh, American League. I have um, Astros winning the West. The Astros mm -hmm. are still the Astros. You yep. know they they replaced uh, Carlos Correa with uh, Pena, and he's he's phenomenal. Um, the Central is is the hardest division. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go the White Sox, but yeah. I, it could just as easily be the Twins or the or the Tigers. Yeah. Um, I don't believe any team from the Central is making the wild card. So whoever wins the division is the Central team that gets in the playoffs. But it could be just as easily White Sox, Twins, or the um, or the Tigers. I got White Sox, and then the East is going to the Blue Jays. With my three wild card teams, I got the AL East being the division to beat this year. I have the Angels, uh, Rays, and Yankees with the uh, Mariners pretty much on the outside looking in. Mm. Yeah, the AL East is hot stacked. Right, Blue Jays and Rays are good. Yankees are off to a great start. You know, they're 16 and 6 right now when this podcast is being recorded. Twins are playing great baseball. I love when the Twins play good baseball. Yes. Going to South Dakota State, you know, the Twins are a big favorite out there. Oh, sure. Um, and I had a buddy, Caleb Theobar, who played for the Twins. So I like when they're playing well. But I also like the White Sox, but they're off to kind of a slow start, 8 and 13. Um, and then Tigers, you know, not to, men or, oh, to mention about the Tigers that Miguel Cabrera got his 3,000th hit. Sure. So cheers to him. Cheers to him. One of the best right-handed hitters of all time. And uh, happy to see that for him. 300, yeah. uh, 3,000 career hits and 500 career home runs. That's... And a triple crown winner, which is very unheard of in the modern the greatest age. greatest triple crown. No, that was just, you know... That was unbelievable. An unbelievable season. Um, and, and speaking of that, you know, we we're looking at, you know, 300 game winners are pretty much going extinct because uh, pitchers aren't uh, throwing as many innings. They're they're not throwing as many games. Um, and then you go to 3,000 hits, like the closest, next closest is, is that, that possibly has a chance is uh, Robinson Cano, who just got released today yeah. by the Mets. So, like, okay, well, he's like, what, 300-something hits away from uh, – 300 something hits away from uh, from getting 3,000, but is he going to get there? He's 39 years old and he just seasons. got released, right? Two or three more seasons. He doesn't have a team right now. So mm. um, those milestones are, are starting to shrink a little bit. Speaking of some other stats I saw that were interesting, if we're on stats, Kevin Guzman joined Cy Young as the only pitcher, minimum 20 innings pitch, to begin a season with five straight starts with no walks and no home runs allowed in yep. the World Series era. Wow. Yep. Five straight starts, no walks, no home runs allowed. Mm -hmm. That's great. How many, how many times do we talk about uh, minimizing the walks and freebies with our with our Wolfpack oh, team? Four pitches or less, right? Um, and Guzman is work. not a guy who throws hard. No, he's not. And and by all accounts, he is throwing a little bit softer this year than he was last year too. And so, 
you know, I don't know what his ERA is, but no walks and no home runs means you're sure. doing something right. Absolutely. So cheers to that. And cheers, cheers to him. One more stat that I think you'll like because it's for our boy Nolan Arenado. Nolan Arenado joins uh, Eddie Matthews, Mike Schmidt, and Troy Gloss as the only third basemen to hit 275 plus home runs in their first 10 seasons. He's unreal. And he's off to a hot, yeah, hot start. Yeah, no, he is. Um, no, we'll get into my MVP picks, but uh, um, no, he's he's one of them. So, <clears throat> and since we did make our predictions, which I, I like your predictions. Currently, as of today, as of recording this podcast, we have the power rankings, which you got the Dodgers, Mets, Yankees, Blue Jays, Giants, Brewers, Padres, Rays, Angels, Cardinals. Anyone on that list surprise you? No, um, not one of these teams um, surprises me. I, uh, I think they're all great teams, and, and they're all teams that we've already mentioned. Um, the Angels surprise The me. only team that surprised me, the Angels surprise you. Okay, talk, talk about that. Uh, I... I I just didn't. Uh, I didn't know they were gonna come off to such a hot start. Sure. Um, yeah, and so it, it's cool to see that they're coming together. It's nice when guys you don't know or think are gonna get off to a really hot start and jump start a team do like we just talked about with Taylor. Right. Um, of course, they have Otani and, and Trout, but I know Otani was off to a slow start. He was. Uh, I think he's picked it back up because he's an absolute professional. Yes. So it's cool to see that. I hope they stay in that in that uh, in that top ten because I want to see those guys in the playoffs. Yeah. Everyone else not so surprising. Padres usually start off hard, hot, and they have the kind of right. Then they pepper off towards the end because they can't close, they can't finish, or not that they can't. They haven't recently. Um, and then the Yankees off to a hot start, and Aaron Judge carrying that squad. So he might he might not have gotten a big enough contract. No, I mean, you know, um, for those of you listening, you'll follow it. Aaron Judge um, basically got a giant contract offer for extension to stay in New York, and he turned it down on the deadline day for him. And uh, he's playing his hand, and it seems to be going really well for him so far. He is really good. Um, Joey Gallo on the opposite side, not very good, hitting under 200 on the season. The team that surprises me on this list is the Cardinals. Um they're, you know, having a decent year, but they're not hitting. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just, the pitching has been phenomenal. Um, defense, as always, is just, just next level, mm-hmm. but they can't hit. So, like, right now, we have the game right in front of me right now because we're both Cardinals fans, and it's the top of the ninth. They're beating the, the, um, they're beating the uh, Royals 1-0 in the top of the ninth with their closer on the mound, and it's just, it's the Royals, right? They're beating a seven and fourteen Royals one nothing, and if they win, then that's 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 what the score is, right? Right. Um, so that uh, that that's why it surprised me a little bit to see the Cardinals up there. I'm not sure who should jump them. I would say maybe the Twins. May I would put the Twins there. Yeah. Yeah, I would have Twins at eleven and maybe Cardinals ten or twelve. Sure. Because I think the Twins being thirteen and nine is more surprising than the Cardinals playing good baseball. Fair. Because the Cardinals always play good baseball. Uh, but maybe that's not what power rankings are about. Right? Sure. So, yeah, who knows what they're all about for this, uh, uh, for what MLB puts up. But Dodgers and Mets being up there, I like I like that. That's cool. Um, but, yeah, so those are power rankings currently as we yeah. speak. Great. When this episode drops, which will be on Thursday, which is three days from now, those sure. rankings could be absolutely completely different. Sure, because three cool. three days uh, change is, everything. You know, four games, three Giovanni games. Gallegos uh, closes this out after one out right now, then, uh, you know, maybe the Cardinals are showing they are. Yeah, Salvador Decent. Perez. Um, yeah, Salvador Perez. All right, um, so who do you got for um, for MVPs? Yeah, my MVPs are Nolan Arenado and Mike Trout. For the first month of the season? Or uh, for the end of the season? For the first month of the season. And and, and those are my picks, honestly. They're my picks. Um, Nolan Arenado uh, on the season is hitting 368. Mm. Um, he's hitting 368 with uh, uh, how many home runs is Six he bombs. Have? Six bombs, 18 RBIs. Um, and he, uh, he he literally took a major league catcher and just threw him to the side, which was really fun to watch in the brawl between the Cardinals and the, uh, <laughs> and the Mets. I was watching that game live. I was in my office. You know, I had it up on the screen. And all of a sudden, I see they they go high and tight on their Nato, and he. He starts a brawl, which you know he's just a big dude. He's not somebody you want to mess with. He's just tremendous, and and honestly, it's really hard. You know, we preach um, good approach at the plate with our kids too, right? Mm-hmm. And it's hard to find a better two strike approach than Nolan Arenado. This guy will sit there with two strikes, and if there's anything within like three or four inches of the strike zone of what he deems a strike zone, he pokes his bat out there, he fouls it off, gets another pitch, 
And he does that while sporting a 300, a 368 batting average, yeah. right? Um, and, and honestly, and a 44% OBP. Right. So, I mean, like almost half the time he's at the plate, he's getting on base right now. So that's just tremendous to me. And um, it's just a lot of fun to watch him, uh, to watch him play and uh, love him. So um, then my, my American League is... Before is, you leave Aaron Yeah, Arnold, go ahead. Uh, so the reason why Aaron Aro started off so hot is because he was upset with his last year's performance. Yes. He was He worked pissed. so hard last year. He was pissed. Or this year. That he hit... 312 last year. Um, no, that was OBP at 255 last 255 year. 255 last yeah. year and had 105 RBI. Yeah, 105 so RBI, over, 34 over home runs. RBI, 34 bombs. The 312 on a base percentage. Low average for him, but he was pissed about that season. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a phenomenal season. I average a little low, but RBI and home run very sure. high. Yeah. And so he was determined no matter when the season was going to start with all the delays, he was going to come uh, game one, hot, ready to go because he was playing with some sort of intensity that he felt sure. like he didn't have last year till like the tail end of the Which season. Is so much fun. Where he got most of his RBI. And not to mention, he's the best third baseman in the game. Well, yeah, he's, he's, just, he's eight automatic. straight gold gloves. He's automatic right now. Um, I think it is. Uh, I think it is nine straight, and he's a, he might go ten. I I, I had to look that up. Um, but anyways, uh, I thought yeah, that was very that is, that is very him. cool about being such a competitive athlete, um, probably understanding that the Cardinals had a good year, he had a good year, but there's always room for more. Um, and as someone who cares about their performance uh, and their team, he wanted to get off to a hot start, and I think that has a lot to do with how the Cardinals are playing. Yes. Because no one really else is hitting on the team like that. That is, that is carrying, accurate. Is carrying a large load. Nine consecutive gold gloves, by the way. Nine. In so his first 10 seasons. Um, he's in his 10th season. He's in his 10th season, right? And um, he's, he's won nine. And so. Yes. 275 career jacks and nine gold gloves. That's just amazing. So, um, we're watching, let me, let me, we're watching let me confirm that. First yeah. Hall of Famer. In his yes. Part. He's a uh, Hall of Famer or not. Yes, absolutely. Um, and then we got Mike. Big then Mike. we got Mike Trout. Mike Trout um, has been uh, off and on, hurt, but still arguably the, the best baseball player of his generation. Mm -hmm. um, and right now he is hitting... Um, what is he? He's, he's hitting 344 on the season. Also has six bombs. Also has six home runs with a 48... Of a point four eight one on base percentage, so he's on base forty eight percent of the time he's at the plate, which is just again absolutely phenomenal. And then at his position, he's one of the best center fielders in the game. Right. So uh, those two guys are just tremendous. They're the MVPs uh, to me of the uh, of the month of, of of April, and they're my early favorites to be MVPs of the season. I love that. Yeah, I mean, Mike Trout's already a three time MVP winner. Sure. Why not four? So why not four? Why not get to Barry Bonds at seven? Yeah. Why not? So. Um, all right. What yeah. about do you have any? Uh, do you have any Cy Young? Picks? I don't have Cy Youngs right now. I, I haven't looked. I, I really haven't either. I figure we can do that maybe next week because I want to have some research in front of me. All right. Well, then there we go. That's a beautiful yeah. topic for Great. next week, which will be uh, Cy Young early predictions for Cy Young based off the first month of the season and uh, based off who we think will sustain that. And you already talked about Guzman with yep. his uh, five starts, no walks, no home runs. Yep. Uh, I haven't really looked at how Marcus Stroman has done. Uh, not great. In his not first well. few starts with Chicago, not which, very is, well. which is sad because we love Marcus Stroman. Yeah, we here. do. Um, but yeah. also, uh, just a super competitor. No doubt, he'll find his. Uh, oh sure. He'll find his flow, and he'll just keep battling through it no matter what. So. Yeah, no, I agree with that. He is a big competitor. Um, right now, he's one and three with a five one three ERA in mm -hmm. five starts. So not not great. But he also went and signed with a team that's not very great. Right. So. Um, um, yeah, that, that kind of goes with the territory, right? Um, other surprises for me. So let's go down the list. I have some of these written down. Um, okay. First off, New York Mets um, budding star, Tyler Mego, who um, is a uh, University of Arizona baseball alum. Bear down. Um, it's 4-0 with a 193 ERA in April. Let's go Bearcats. Just phenomenal. He was um, named an opening day starter because Scherzer and... Uh, and DeGrom were hurt. Scherzer's back. DeGrom just had an MRI last week. There's a, there's some... Uh, that's another scary thing about the Mets is they're arguably their best pitcher has been hurt. Can't can't pitch. Can't pitch right now. Can't find his way on the But there's, they still have the first no-hitter. As a combined no-hitter, Tyler Maggio obviously you know, went six innings in that. Um, 
The Red Sox, which is a top 10 offense last year, is just terrible this year. Um, to go with Trevor Story, who has no home runs and has a so slow start. Marcus Simeon signed the big contract with the Rangers. Also, no home runs. Also, a very slow start for him. Mm-hmm. Um, Yawin, you already mentioned four starts, no walks or home runs given up. Um, just one complete game. I think a lot of that has to do with the shortened uh, spring training. Um, we yeah. look at the Clayton Kershaw being pulled out of a perfect game after seven because yeah. he was at his pitch count and everybody's, oh, why is this? Well, let's talk about that for a second. I agree with Clayton Kershaw getting pulled specifically because it's so early in the season. You got a 34-year-old on the mound who didn't really pitch last year. Right. He's been hurt. Um, he's off injured, and the Dodgers aren't looking for – um, April accolades. They're, they're looking for a World Series. The the accolades don't matter if Clayton Kershaw cannot pitch at the end of the season. Correct. And Clayton Kershaw is absolutely 100%, without knowing him uh, personally, one of those guys who does not care about his accolades. Correct. We saw this video of him getting his, what, 300th career? Yeah, 3,000. 3,000th career strikeout. Yeah. And the dude... Didn't want a standing ovation. Yeah. He was trying to quiet the crowd. He just wanted to get after he, it. He was on the mound, ready to go again. But people and were so was congratulatory of off. him, right? Yep. He, they were like excited for him, and he finally took the moment. So Clayton Kershaw probably is 100% okay with that yeah. decision because he cares about his arm health, but he cares more about his team and the longevity sure. he can have for his team later in the season and not throwing two extra innings and potentially Correct. 35 more pitches. Absolutely. And Which, ironically... If you don't think 35 pitches is a lot, go out and throw 35 pitches at full yeah, steam and see how your arm feels sure. the next day. Um, and ironically, it was his teammate, Walker Buehler, um, who has the only complete game this year. Who's a stuff? Um, speaking of the Dodgers and Clayton Kershaw, the Dodgers have allowed a .093 whip in April. So that means that... That is less than 10% walks and hits per innings pitched. Mm. Um, that is the lowest in April for any team that has ever played more than seven games. So uh, that's cool. And then Clayton Kershaw at 34 years old on his own has a .67 whip over four starts in April, which is the best in the National League. So again, frustrating to see a perfect game get broken up. You know, and a guy and a legend come off the mound. You know, they gave the ball to a rookie who got an out and then got a good gave up a hit. Sure. So I would have maybe not given that baseball to a rookie. It was like a 7 1 game. It wasn't that good of a game. But maybe in that specific situation, I'm giving it to my setup man to keep the perfect game going. Maybe, yeah. Just for, the, just for that. You're not putting any more tension on. On your 34 year old returning star, but at least you're you're giving your versus hey, first big league performance. Good luck. Sure. Perfect game going. Sure. Here's the ball. Don't give up a hit. Yeah, no there's a there's a you. definite conversation and argument to be made about that. Yeah, so that that part sure. frustrated me a little bit. But those those are my my surprises. Um, things that I'm not surprised about. Rangers are terrible. Um, Astros are the Astros. Um, I think um, the Yankees. Um, are a lot better than they were last year. And uh, Anthony Rizzo is tremendous and is also another potential MVP candidate. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and and without him, you know, how good are the Yankees? Um, so, oh, Nestor Cortez, by the way. We talk about Marcus Stroman. My favorite pitcher to watch in baseball is Nestor Cortez. This guy will change his delivery on every pitch. Really? Just to mess with the timing of the hitter. He's so much fun. So much so that I... Picked him up on my baseball fantasy team just so I can follow him closer. Nice. He's so much in I follow him on, on you know you follow him on social media. He's just he loves the game. He's a Love lot it. of fun. Good so love, it. love, um, it. love the game. You know, Yankees uh, Yankees have a good squad this year, which does surprise me a little bit. Um, just based off what we saw last year. Yeah. Um, and then and then it surprised me the Red Sox are as bad as they are right now. Well, yeah, they, I, yeah. Got anything? No. Huh? Nothing right. else. Cool. Um, Let's move on to the uh, other important, speaker. other important yeah. topics. So, Wolf pack baseball, baby. So, a cool thing for us, obviously, is we uh, we do coach youth baseball, and uh, as we've gotten to know our new team better, they are sporting more champions of just uh, merch and gear, um, they sure and are. they are listening to our podcast. So, we of course will be talking about our weekends. Um, it is a little bit more of an interesting dynamic because uh, Coach Aaron and I, uh, we have two teams, right? We have the Wolfpack, and one is the Navy team, and one is the Gold team. So oftentimes we are together with one of those teams. Sometimes I'm with one team, he's with another, um, as we share duties with other coaches. 
Um, that being said, we will speak on what we saw. Mm-hmm. And let's start with the gold team, um, who uh, we, we spent the most time with this weekend. This is a 10-person a a, a, a person roster that is uh, playing up. No, so 13-year-olds generally play 5480. Yep. We are playing 6090. Which mostly for those that don't know baseball, that's high school, college, high school, college, uh, major league yes. feet. Distance, yes. Right. 60 is the feet from the mound to home plate, and 90 is from uh, home plate to the first base. Yes. Base. And, and I know first most of you are baseball people watching this, but in case yeah, we have just a, a straggler from my other platform, sure. Um, that's what that is. And thank you for listening. Um, so yeah, that that becomes the the, the complicated uh, balance, right? Is that you're playing 13 year olds against 14 year olds or really top talent 13 year olds at a distance that they've never played before. So with it comes a territory of bumps and bruises, you're going to lose games. Um, and it, it really becomes, you know, how do we rebound from that? So um, Brian, the great Brian Kane said in his podcast this morning, there are winners and there are learners. Mm-hmm. So when you win, that is a cultivation of you succeeding from everything that you've learned. Mm-hmm. But when you lose, it's a lesson learned. Um, and we got some lessons this weekend. We went one and three. Um, but it's important to remember that the most important thing at this age is not wins and losses. Um, you know, I, I, we've said it before. If we really wanted to win all of our games, we'd play down. Um, we play up to to teach the game and to get kids ready for high school. So these kids are developing and getting better, and we're watching them get better over every game. We went one and three on the weekend. We actually, the first day was just a tough day of baseball and kind of smacked in the mouth. Um, you know, day two, we went up against a really strong majors team. Uh, took them down to the brink to the last AB. Yeah, great game. All it was around. a great game. Um, and then the fourth game was just one of those trap games where you come up and they're not really – a strong baseball team. So then what kind of baseball team are you going to be? Um, highlights from the weekend, uh, Finn Cove uh, pitching against that really strong team and then pitching a masterful game um, with uh, Sloan White uh, catching him and working his butt off all day. Uh, Sloan caught three of our four games this weekend. Great job, Sloaney. Mm-hmm. Um, Sloaney Bear. Sloaney Bear. Um, we got uh, Steven Madrano hit a, uh, a moonshot over the left field fence during what well, wasn't a great game, but, but hit a tank I mean, anyways. he said hit an absolute tank to break a shutout. So, uh, shouts to you, Steven. Steve O, um, who also um, got the uh, win, our sole win of the, of the weekend. Um, and during that game, uh, Vinny Weber was our MVP. Nice. Was some good base knocks. So, uh, tremendous job there. Um, Gosh, uh, any any speci- other specific uh, shout outs that you want to give to that team? Well, big time Vinny Weber, right? The uh, the game previous game three ended in a just a weird way, right? Yeah, it did. It's part of the game of baseball, why we love it so much, because yeah. anything can happen at any moment and you don't know what it could be. And for us who've been around the game so long, I've never seen a game end that way. Yeah, so now we'll that's talk it, about that for now second. that's in my book, right? Yeah, we'll talk about that. So we um so we tie the game, so Lincoln Boyles comes up. Um, and we're going to say names because these kids are also listening and we want you to know the kids that we're, that we're working with their great kids. And Lincoln Boyle, who just, the kid works. Like all he does is work, 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 work. And you want to see the results from that. Um, he comes up, um, we're down to our last out yeah. against a really strong team. Runners in second and third. Down by two. two outs. Down by two. And Lincoln comes up and he, uh, he just pulls one down the line. Right, 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 right over the first base. Instead. So, so two run game tying base hit. So we tie it. Tremendous hitting right there. Um, then, then big Vinny Weber comes on and we put him on the mound and we walk the first batter. You know, again, one run, you know, wins the game. Walk the first batter. Um, and then uh, pick me's a lefty and pick move to first base. And the get on first was was very fast. Um, over through first base. It's just not a good move. You know, it wasn't not a bad move. It just he he dropped his arm angle and the ball sailed. And that uh, kid, because of the field that we're on, because it's high school the, field, high school field the kids have to run a little bit farther to get the baseball. Correct. And because of that, the kids scored on that one play. Um, and the game was over. And just hats off to you, Vinny. That's such a tough way to lose a game for everybody. Um, was the second time we got walked off on on yeah, the weekend. On the it was weekend, just yeah. so tough. tough um, it's hard, you know, but if we're going to teach, uh, if, if it's about learning and unexpected, unique ways 
things sure. happen in the game, that's yeah. a perfect thing, right? Yeah. Now the next time Vinny gets in that situation, which he will absolutely get oh, into 100%. a game where it's tied going into the last inning, mm -hmm. he'll be much more under control. He'll be much more relaxed. He'll have had the feeling before, and he'll make that throw boom to first, right? Maybe even pick him off, potentially get the next two bat two or three batters out, right? right? So he's learning to be in these pressure-filled situations in an environment that's really non-consequential. Like right. when we lost that game, we're not mad. No. All we do is want to care for Vinny. Yes. Vinny, your identity is not wrapped up in that one play. Not at all. You're going to start the next game and you're going to crush it. Yes. And that's exactly what he did, right? I wasn't at the game because I had some family business to take care sure. of. It was my sister's birthday on May 1st, so I went out to eat with my parents. Happy birthday to Rachel. Happy birthday, Rachie. And so from what Bodson told me, Vinny comes back, starts the game, has a couple knocks, some good base running. Starts the game at first. To starts the game at yeah, first. Yes, yes. Uh, all of that stuff is, is, is really hard for adults to do when things go bad yes and we have to just basically take an hour and then come back and try to do the exact same thing just as good or not better that's yeah. hard for anyone to do Vinny did that right so that's really cool to see now he has more experience he has more more tools in his toolkit to utilize when he gets in these situations and that's really what it's all about for these kids at 13 because now they have this season and next season then they start their freshman year of high school so they've had all of this time to figure out everything that could happen on a baseball field, the distance, um, who they are as a teammate, who they are as a player, how they want to show up, all of these things. And it's, that's, that's what Gold is continuing to learn sure. every single week. Um, and you can see the improvement season. in the players, like wild improvements. Like It's like mind-blowing how fast they're getting better. Yeah. Because um, at 13, I was awful and not getting better. And it right. took me a while to understand well, anything. And that's the tough thing at this age is do you want to win or do you want to get better? Um, and it's frustrating to lose games. But of if you are learning and you're getting better, are you better off today to, as, with a goal of playing high school baseball? Are you better off today by winning a 20 nothing game or by losing a 7-6 to six game? Mm -hmm. It's losing. It's, it's losing that 7-6 to six game, right? Um, because now you've learned certain nuances of the game and it, and, it, and, it, and it ages you a little bit in the game so that when you're in high school and you're in that situation, you know how to handle it better, mm -hmm. which will happen in high school, right? Um, but cool. Gold team, awesome job. Yeah, great job, gold if you're team. Listening, keep it up. Yeah, please. We please, absolutely uh, love coaching you. Yeah. Um, and cheers. let us know. Let us know if you listened. Uh, give us give us a, hey, we heard your podcast. Thanks for giving us a shout out. We'll see you Thursday. Um, and uh, Navy team. Navy team. Navy um, team. Let's talk about that first game real quick. So confidence is great. I think this is a life lesson in general. Um, confidence is great. Mm -hmm. It's great to have confidence. Overconfidence can really hinder your performance right. and your ability. Um, and that's what happened game one. Um, we know... These guys were, oh, this this team, we were playing against a team that we played one of the teams similar to them, but it wasn't this team. And we run-ruled them. And this this specific Navy team run-ruled them. And, uh, and so, oh, this team isn't good. Oh, we're going to win this game. This team's trash, et cetera, et cetera. Well, first inning, they strike out the sides on us. Um, we swing and miss at balls out our heads three times in a row. Yeah. Uh, for, th for strike three, three times in a row. Um, you know, too many times we see teams that come in too confident and they lose. So that's, that's what happened that first game, right? We don't need to talk too much about it, but you know, it's kind of like they, 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 they looked up, oh shoot, we're down four nothing against a team that we thought was terrible. Mm -hmm. I'm ended up losing eight to seven on a, on a, a what? A walk off. At one point during my weekend, after that, that first game yesterday against, uh, against the Cobras, I realized that three of my five games I'd coached so far that weekend were walk off losses. Which means that every game has gone down to the end. Yes. Which means our teams are playing tough. The other teams are playing tough. And right. it's down to these these uh, intense situations. Sure. But confidence, speaking of confidence from a mental standpoint, uh, confidence really means, right, What if you extrapolate all of it, it means having intense trust in yourself. Yeah. Having intense trust in yourself doesn't mean you think less of the people that you're playing. Right. It's an individual thing. I have intense trust in my abilities as a baseball player, but I still think highly of the team that I'm playing, which raises my level of game and allows me to have even more trust in myself because I know that I can elevate my game to whoever I'm playing. Yes. Not thinking that this team is less than so that I can just be loose and relaxed. That's how you get beat. Yes, That's 100%. how things don't go well in your life, generally speaking. So confidence is about believing and having intense trust in yourself 
through the proper channels and then always thinking very highly of the team that you're going against because they have players, they have dudes, they can get it done as well. And so you elevate yourself by elevating who you might think you're playing yes. and then having more trust in your abilities and your teammates' abilities. Absolutely, which is why teammates are brothers. Exactly. The um, and they have to be, right? Um, another cool thing is uh, Navy ended up winning the next five games. Yeah. Um, and uh, didn't hit a home run. And this is a team that, that loves to uh, identify with the long ball, right? You have guys like Preston Farragut who who loves hitting home runs. Mm -hmm. And he's good at it. He hits a lot of home runs. Sure. We're playing on fields that it's a little bit tougher. Um, and so this team was just such a good hitting team that they got through. We have guys, you know, um, Farragut started game one and then realized he had a uh, dislocated thumb. Uh, full transparency here. I, I know that uh, if you watch it on YouTube, you can tell that there's like a little slice, <laughs> a little break in there. Yeah. Um, if you're watching, or if you listen on Spotify or any kind of just audio, no idea you have no about. idea, but I'm, I'm filling you in anyways. My roommate's not feeling well. He came in, needed an emergency trip to, uh, to urgent care. So I dropped him off. We'll go pick him up once he gets what he needs there. But we're going to finish the episode here real quick. And we left off right when we were talking about our boy, Preston, Preston uh, Farragut. He, he, he dislocated, the, uh, his, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. dislocated his finger before the game, jacking around. Uh, so he couldn't grip baseball, wasn't throwing strikes. So we walked a lot of guys, got in the hole early. Um, Weston Williams, um, who's like our, our de facto closer of this yeah. team. Um, nasty curveball. Um, really good run on his fastball. I know he listens too. He was recently spotted at a Mavericks playoff game wearing a Champions Adjust hoodie sweatshirt. So that fires me up. Boy, Weston! Um, uh, pitch well. Um, let's just run down the list of our pitchers, man. Like, like let's let's go down. Um, Weston pitched well. Uh, Kellen Cantrell is just a beast on the bound. Pitched really well. Grady Holmes, who is, has been inconsistent throwing strikes. Um, Figured it out this weekend and yeah. pitched a gym. Yeah. Um, Chase Robbins, uh, just an absolute bulldog in the mound, just 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 pounding the zone. Max Bachman and uh, and uh, Hudson Holt, um, same thing. Did great job. Uh, Farragut started yesterday, got the win again. The championship game, they won their championship game, seventeen to two. Yeah, one five um, straight. One five straight. So, uh, really fun weekend. Another cool thing about Weston is he came up with the bases loaded and um, hit a, a line shot down the line and scored three. Um, just a, uh, a you know, uh, Bachman, Max Bachman made a tremendous catch in center field, mm -hmm. robbing a surefire triple um, in the first inning of game two uh, on, uh, on Saturday. Um, who else? Uh, I mean, I think mentioned. it's important to note about this team, right, that on Saturday they had some delays. Yes. Right, they played about an hour and a half after they were originally supposed to start yes. on game one. Not an excuse, just pointing it out, right? Remember that, not an excuse, we don't use excuses. Potentially it's a reason, not an excuse, right? Champions adjust always, that's why we talk about it. But really my point that I'm trying to make is that their second game, which is supposed to start at six, started around nine-ish, right. ended very late. It's about an hour and a half, two, two hour drive home for everyone. And then they're coming back the next day early in the same hour and a half drive, which game starts at 11.30. Got to be there at 10.30. Then, so not getting very much sleep, having coming in the morning, not knowing where their seating was, dominating that game, then playing the next three in a row, ending there, ending around 8.39. three run rolls on the day. Four, 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 four of those, uh, four of those uh, six games and then run rules. Yeah. Um, just shows resilience on the on these guys. So that's just, not the definition of champions adjust. I don't know no, what it the, is. They, I know it's the name of this podcast, really well. but really it's also something that I've adopted and Coach Boson has adopted as a way of teaching kids. Yes. Right? Because it really actually is a great saying and it actually means a lot. Yeah. It's how I construct my mindset program. It's why the kids want to wear the wristbands because champions do constantly have to adjust and pivot and refocus yep. and be resilient through all of these situations and setbacks, eventually why they actually do become champions um, like the Navy team did over the weekend, which is awesome. And what all of our boys do consistently, practicing three times a week, doing their own lessons, doing their own practices, coming to the games, being ready to go, all of this stuff is the definition of this podcast, definition of champions adjust. Absolutely. Agreed. And I think that's a, that's a good way to end it. Great way to end it. No, I think we're good. You know, shout out to the Navy team for uh, for adjusting like champions and becoming champions. 
um, late last night in Cleburne. Um, shout out to Gold for adjusting yourselves. Uh, obviously, it's it's been a tough start to the year, but you know, doing a great job learning the game and uh, picking each other up. And I think we're gonna have a really fun uh, rest of the season. I think it's gonna be a fun May. Absolutely, absolutely. Well. This was uh, episode number five of the sure. Champions Adjust podcast. You want more episodes, you want merchandise, you want to contact us, anything, it's all at the website at champsadjust.com. We'll be back regularly with these episodes every Thursday. Let us know what you want to talk about or just keep showing up. Share with a baseball buddy. We appreciate you whenever, wherever you're listening or watching to this. Always remember the Champions Adjust. Much love. See you next time.